what you are watching right now is not your typical StarCraft II game. That's because neither of these players are human. That's right, they are bots. Computer programs specifically designed to play in a bot versus bot environment. In the top right corner, defending against an early attack, I present to you my own bot, Sajuk. I have been working on it for the past few months, and as you can see, it will not go down without a fight. My name is Gaik, and welcome to Artificially Intelligent. Hello and welcome everyone. Today I want to talk to you about the StarCraft 2 bot that I've been working on. It all started about two months ago when I stumbled across a YouTube video showcasing a bot vs human game and I discovered that there was a StarCraft 2 botting community. I'm a professional software engineer and I really enjoy solving problems with code, especially puzzles and brain teasers. I also used to be a Platinum League Zerg player a couple years ago, so making a bot for the game was a very appealing challenge for me. The community, which is called StarCraft 2 AI Arena, is very nice and very important because you cannot play with a bot on the normal ladder. What you have to do is play on a special version of the game, which is supported by Blizzard and totally legit, but it doesn't allow you to play against other people. But the community, what they did is that they're hosting servers and a special ladder that is bot versus bot only and a pro bots tournament for the best bots. They're also super friendly, they have a discord where you can ask questions and everybody will help you out building your bot. And so I joined the community and started coding. I picked Zerg as my main race and I decided to take a simple approach. I wanted to do a single build order and I picked a two base row challenge. I wanted to really push this build until the main reason why I would lose game was because my build wasn't flexible enough. Because there is a lot of things to code and to take into account. And just dealing with roaches I felt like would allow me to work on the economy, work on movements and code all the things that I need to be able to deal with multiple unit types later down the road. Also, roaches have a good potential because of their ability to regenerate life while burrowed. In the hands of a bot, you can micro each unit individually and burrow them when they get on low life. You can then wait until they're healed and then rejoin the fight. On top of that, since they're a ranged unit, they're a bit easier to handle. You have less things to calculate like surrounds and stuff that you would do with zerglings. Uh, so it seemed like a an easy unit to start to as your main army composition. And so you might be thinking, wait a minute, if you build only roaches, how do you deal with air units? And you're right, I completely decided to ignore air units. Uh, I would lose games against anyone who built air units and that's fine. I really wanted to focus on one thing, get the basics down. And even to this day, I only make roaches. I'm quite lucky though, because at least at my level of bots, there's not really any bots who goes for air units. Not sure why, but it plays in my favor, so I'm happy about that. The build order that I'm going with is 16 hatch, quick extractor followed by 17 pool. I get queens out as soon as my pool is done, and a few zerglings just for defense. Uh, next I go into a quick lair, and that's important for my strategy at least because I really want Burrow and Tunneling Claws to be researched quickly. It's not so great in a real human matchup, but the thing is with bots is that they don't handle stealth very well. Um, most of the bots don't have a counter to stealth or haven't got around to coding it, so I, I get good engagements with Tunneling Claws being able to sneak up on enemies. And the life regen while burrowed is surprisingly effective in the long run. It makes your army very durable because you lose less units. And as the game goes on, you slowly build up an advantage. Talking about micro, there's a neat trick bots can do with workers. You see, whenever the worker goes near your hatchery to drop minerals, it will slow down as it gets closer. However, if you give a unit the order to move, they will not slow down as much 
And so what the bot can do is for each worker that needs to drop minerals, instead of just doing the automatic walk, uh, you give an order to walk real close to the hatchery and then drop your resources. And so that's what you see all the move orders near my hatcheries is workers trying to speed mine. And this gives you about five to six percent extra minerals and it helps a lot. As you can see, four minute 30 in, I have about six roaches out, three queens, a couple of zerglings, burrow is ready, tunneling claws is on the way and will be ready at the same time as plus one ranged attacks. And my attack pattern is really simple, as I said, trying to get the basics down. So when I first reach 18 army supply, I start a first attack. So I take all my army and go straight for the enemy's base. And as you see in a moment here, the Tarrant is really well prepared. It has a bunker and a few marauders. So I'm gonna take a bad fight. Um, when I said most opponents don't handle stealth, you'll see here instant scan from the opponent, totally ne negating my burrow advantage. Um, and so here we see the single roach going back to the base. And that's because I haven't implemented how to disengage yet. So they will only retreat after a fight. Once they retreat, how it works is it's just gonna wait every time it's defeated until it has a bigger army than before by a certain threshold and just attack again. So it's not really smart in the way that it won't look at the enemy's uh, total army supply or anything like that. It's just gonna hit harder every time until either it loses or the army is strong enough to win. This attack and retreat pattern is very primitive, but it makes my bot decisive. Compared to some other bots who will be scared and try to dodge fights and not counterattack, my bot will relentlessly attack and not miss an opportunity to deal some damage. Here we can see uh, we just retreated, so the, the army is in retreat mode. It doesn't think it's strong enough to face the army that just beat it. So it's kind of staying off the fight, which is unfortunate here because the natural is heavily under attack. But soon enough, with more reinforcements, it's gonna start moving in. And here it's a nice flank hitting the siege tank in the back and wiping the enemy's force. Now, on the research side of things, we're not researching upgrades outside of the build order. So the army is going to be stuck on plus one range attacks for the rest of the game. Um, but this is something I'm planning to add very soon and should give me an edge as the game goes on. I have spent a lot of time on dealing with the economy. So transferring workers between bases, assigning the right amount whenever there's imbalanced amount of workers between base and also dealing with expense. So I said this was a two base all in, but to be able to last over 10 minutes, I need to take on more bases. So it will naturally grow and try to keep its economy. And I have capped it at 70 workers. You will also notice that creep thread has been implemented. So I have one extra queen and at some point three extra queens just to deal with creep. And it will try to converge towards the enemy base, so favoring vision into the enemy's territory. Here we're about to see a big fight and you'll see this is what I call the sneak attack so whenever they try to engage they will start by burrowing themselves when they have tunneling claws and walk up to the enemy to bridge the gap because roaches have a short range and they will also focus fire dangerous units like siege tanks, colossi, immortals um, here we see how the stealth is coming in handy dodging three tanks in siege mode and the, what happens here is the Terran probably is running out of energy because it's been scanning a lot. So I can finally leverage my burrow tactics and start winning the game. As we can see the supply is highly in my favor and the Terran army has been completely defeated. So it's just a matter of destroying all the buildings at this point. My goal for Sajuk is to have it compete in the ProBots tournament. To do that you have to qualify first so you need a high rank into Division 1 at the end of his season. The previous one just finished and Sajuk scored a 5th place in Division 2 with a peak in 2nd place. So my hope for next season is to finish in Division 1 and work my way from there.
I will be making more videos to showcase the progress I make on Sajuk. But also, I want to show the dev side of things. So stay tuned if you're interested about the code behind Sajuk, and if you want to learn more about bot development in general. Thanks everyone for watching! If you have any questions or subjects you'd like to know more about, feel free to drop them in the comments and it would be my pleasure to answer them. Since you made it to the end, it would be very nice if you could hit the subscribe button. My name is Gaik and I'll see you in the next one.